Every day is a learning day. You learn at least one new thing a day. But in this one video alone, you're gonna learn at least 20 new things. Yeah, it's a big day to be you. These are 20 things you didn't know a minute ago. Number 20. Black light or UV light test in hotels. We all know what can happen behind the closed doors of a hotel room, but the good news is that once a guest checks out, the hotel cleaners come in and clean everything, including changing the bedding so that you don't have to worry about sleeping in someone else's filth. But if you notice this in your hotel room, run fast. Not every hotel changes their sheets after guests have left, nor do they clean everything as well as they possibly could. You can actually buy UV light tests or black lights, take them to your hotel room, and see what exactly is and isn't clean. The results may they just disturb you. Some people have done just that and noticed that bed sheets weren't changed between guests. They also noticed strange stains on seats, flooring, and soft furnishings. While there can be no way to make a hotel room 100% clean, it's disturbing to think that the bare basics, like changing sheets, aren't always done. TV and news presenters have even exposed some of the most prominent hotels and motels in the United States for not changing their bedding, which goes to show that it's not just budget motels that are breaking all the basic hygiene rules. Gross. You would definitely want to run. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. High heels were only for men. It's not very often that you see men walking around in high-heeled shoes. Most of them are marketed towards women, even though men are free to wear them. However, what you may not realize is that it was mainly men who used to wear them. When they came into fashion in around 10 BC, Persian cavalrymen used to wear them to help keep them in the stirrups while riding horses. Wealthy Egyptian men also used to wear them, while the less affluent men often walked around in bare feet. Their high-heeled shoes were made of leather with lacing and showed others that they were rich. Although butchers also used to wear shoes with thick heels so that they didn't have to walk through the blood of the animals that they had just butchered. For a long time, high heels for men symbolized military prowess, social stature, wealth, and fashionable taste. By the end of the 17th century, after seeing how powerful men in the military looked, many aristocrats in Europe started wearing them. They would often be paired with tight, colored stockings and loose breeches that would enhance the shape of their calves and thighs. It's incredible to think just how much has changed. Number 18. There's a smoke alarm for the deaf. We all know that smoke alarms save lives. That piercing alarm going off in the dead of night is often enough to wake you up from your slumber so that you can get out of your property if it's on fire. But have you ever wondered how deaf people and those who are a little hard of hearing can hear a smoke alarm? You can actually purchase special smoke alarms for those who are hard of hearing. They consist of a traditional smoke alarm, a sensor unit, a vibrating disc, and even a tiny attachment box that you can put on your body. The smoke alarm you install on your ceiling detects smoke, heat, or fire and transmits that information to the sensor unit, which then turns on flashing strobe lights. The vibrating disc is installed under your bed, and this also vibrates when a fire is detected. Essentially, instead of hearing a smoke alarm going off to be alerted to a fire, you see and feel that there's a fire. One family with a deaf son invested in this smoke alarm, which was able to save his life. The majority of the family were alerted to a fire by traditional means, including the father, who was a firefighter, while the 13-year-old son was able to wake up to the vibrations and strobe light. Unfortunately, these units are hundreds of dollars more than a standard smoke alarm, which means not everyone who needs one can actually afford one. Number 17. Antarctica is the world's largest desert. When you think about deserts, Antarctica definitely won't spring to mind. Instead, you'd think about large, sandy, barren pieces of land with a few cacti and very little water or vegetation. But you may be surprised to learn that Antarctica is a desert, and it's actually the largest in the world. Not only is it the most isolated, coldest, and windiest continent on Earth, but all 13.8 million square kilometers of it is classed as a desert because it meets the definition of one. A desert is described as being a region that receives little to no water, under 250 50 millimeters of precipitation per year, and that precipitation can include rain, mist, snow, and fog. Deserts are also described as being areas where more water evaporates than falls, and Antarctica also takes that box. So while thinking of deserts, you'll probably
only picture of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia and northern China, the Sahara Desert in Africa, and even Death Valley in California. But you can also imagine some of the coldest places on Earth. Antarctica is a cold, windswept continent that only has about 51 millimeters or less precipitation per year and very little life. Only some species have adapted to survive, like tundra vegetation, mites, and some algae. Number 16. Your ears and nose keep growing. What if I were to tell you that your ears and nose won't stop growing? If you already think your ears and nose are pretty big, that might be an alarming fact to learn. But don't worry, they don't grow in the way that you might think. Their size doesn't actually change, as in you're not going to end up like a combination of Dumbo and Pinocchio, probably. However, they may become a bit droopier as we age. Our noses and ears are made of cartilage, which features collagen and other fibers. The cartilage breaks down when we get older, so our earlobes start to sag, and even our noses droop a little bit. So far, Studies have shown that your ears can lengthen about 0.22 millimeters per year, and both men and women experience this strange growth. But don't worry, it's not going to be noticeable. That's because the rest of your face is probably going to be a little bit saggy and wrinkly, too. Unless someone manages to find the fountain of youth between now and then, it's just something we're going to have to live with. Number 15. The Eiffel Tower Grows in Summer I am both shocked and amazed. Did you know that the Eiffel Tower can be taller or shorter depending on the time of year? In summer, when the temperatures in Paris can skyrocket to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, the Eiffel Tower can be up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters taller. Basically, on any given day, you could be measuring the tower and get a different measurement each time. Imagine if it was a record-breaking structure but only by 6 inches. It would lose its title at least once a year. Basically, what happens is that the 320 four meter tall metal structure expands in the heat and shrinks in the cold. That's just what steel does, and it's known as thermal expansion. The iron particles absorb heat in the summer, which causes them to move faster and take up more space, changing the dimensions. Fortunately, most structures like the Eiffel Tower and bridges are designed with this principle in mind, so they can actually expand and contract without damage or breaking. Still, I bet you'll be thinking about this fact the next time you visit Paris. Number 14. Bees can fly higher than Mount Everest. When you learn that bees can fly higher than Mount Everest, you might think the way that we found out that information was by scaling the mountain and finding bumblebees up there. But scientists actually found another way to learn this information. I mean, I don't know why it was so important that we needed to know, but uh, there you go. University of California researchers traveled to a western China mountain range and captured six male alpine bumblebees. They put them in clear, sealed boxes and changed the air density and oxygen levels to simulate different elevations. Once they did this, the researchers observed that the bees could fly in conditions equivalent to 13,000 feet. Some were even able to fly past 30,000 feet, which is how tall Mount Everest is. How they did this was truly quite incredible. The researchers observed the bees increasing the angle of their extended wings, making them closer to their heads and abdomens with each change. The bees that the researchers took were an alpine species known as Bombus impetuosus, and they were found at about 10,660 feet or 3,250 meters. However, they don't actually differ all that much from the bees living closer to sea level. Number 13. Oranges were green. What you're about to learn about oranges will have you shook. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. What came first, the color orange or the fruit? Well, let's dive into that, shall we? Before the 16th century, orange wasn't a color. It was a shade of red known as geolorade. The word orange actually came from the word naranga, which actually refers to the tree oranges grow on. It was adopted in Old French as orenga with an E rather than an A, and is now what we know as orange. But the fruit wasn't actually named for their color because they weren't the color orange. Shock horror! They were green! Oranges are naturally green in warmer clients like Vietnam, Thailand, and Brazil, and stay green throughout their lifetime. They don't ripen once you harvest them, so they're actually sold as green fruit in most of those warmer parts of the world. So why are they orange in other parts of the world? Well, they can turn orange. This happens when the chlorophyll in the orange peel dies off due to an air temperature drop. When the chlorophyll dies, the orange pigments that are hidden from view are exposed. As we associate orange oranges with ripeness, some farmers spray their crops with ethylene to kill off any leftover chlorophyll to ensure there's no green coloring left that would make you assume they're unripe. Wow, my mind is blown. Number 12. 
The Queen's Handbag is a Body Language Communication Device The Queen of England has social engagements down to a fine art. After all, she's been attending a range of different events her entire life. She's not always going to enjoy every single one of them, and there have probably been times when she wished she could get away from people who were boring or holding her up. But you don't need to worry about that, really. Have you ever noticed how the queen goes nowhere without a handbag? According to royal experts, that's because she uses them as a body language communication device. When she does something specific with her bag, her lady-in-waiting or another staff member will jump into action. Royal experts say that if she puts her handbag on the table at dinner, she wants that dinner to end very shortly, as in within five minutes. If she puts it on the ground in any environment, that may mean that she's tired of that conversation and wants someone to come in and save her from the situation. If rumors are to be believed, the Queen has over 200 Lawner London bags, and they are large enough to carry your average handbag staples. But what does a Queen even need to carry? It's not like she needs a driver's license or a passport. Apparently, she carries a 5 or 10 pound note in her handbag on a Sunday for church, lipstick, a comb, and lucky charms from her family like miniature dogs and horses. Number 11. There's a Hedgehog Cafe in Tokyo, Japan. You've heard of cat cafes, but what about hedgehog cafes? It seems absurd that someone has just gone in and collected a bunch of hedgehogs from the wild and charged people for the privilege of seeing them. And, well, that is absurd. That's not quite how this cafe is set up. The hedgehogs within the Harry the Hedgehog Cafe in Harajuku are African pygmy hedgehogs that are bred to be domesticated. They're smaller than your average wild ones and have lighter colored spines and pink snouts. When you visit the cafe, you order your experience at a vending machine. You pay around $15 or 1,630 yen for a half-hour play session with a hedgehog, some mealworms to feed them, and a drink for yourself. You're then seated at a table with a glass tank where hedgehogs are present. You can put on the provided gloves and handle them with instructions on how to do so safely. There's always someone close by to ensure you're handling them properly and make sure the hedgehogs aren't harmed or distressed. Many of them appear to just curl up in a ball in your hands and go to sleep. Number 10. New Zealand is part of a larger sunken landmass. New Zealand is a tiny country in the southwestern Pacific Ocean that's home to a little over 5 million people. It covers about 268,000 square kilometers, or 103,500 square miles, and consists of over 700 smaller islands and two main land masses. To get from the North Island to the South Island, you have to fly or travel by boat, and it's such a small country that it's often left off the world map or considered a state of Australia. But did you know it wasn't always as small as it is today? It forms part of the lost continent of Zealandia, which broke off from the Gondwana about 85 million years ago and sank below the ocean. About 94% of the continent is submerged, with only some parts sitting above the water, making up New Zealand and other tiny islands. We haven't always known too much about Zealandia, but now you can explore it for yourself. New Zealand Research Institute GNS Science published an interactive website and two maps covering the shape of the ocean floor and the tectonic profile of Zealandia. Now anyone can learn about the continent's origins, the volcanoes in New Zealand, and a range of other geological features if they capture your interest. Number 9. Geese are sentries in China. Geese have a bit of a bad reputation in many parts of the world for being loud, aggressive, and downright rude. But in China, they're proving to be valuable members of the police force. The best part is they take their wages in food. There's a bit of a crime issue in some parts of China, and rural police stations are now being guarded by squads of geese. According to Dongguan Police Station Director Hang Gang, geese are vigilant, especially at night. They will honk when they notice a threat and won't stop until that threat is gone. If one goose starts honking, they all start, which means they can function as a type of alarm system for police. Another police chief said they also spread their wings and attack strangers entering what they consider to be their property, which makes them an excellent garter. He even said they were more useful than dogs in some ways, because intruders can drug dogs with poison food, but geese in groups are not going to respond the same way. They've already proven what they're capable of. Police in Shawan County were able to catch a man who broke into a police headquarters to take a motorbike. He drugged two police dogs, climbed over the wall, and was met by 20 geese who fanned their wings and honked until the duty officer woke up and caught the thief. Number 8. 
Sharks are older than trees. It's easy to assume that trees have been around forever and that they're older than anything else. In reality, some creatures have been around much longer. Did you know that sharks are actually older than trees? Researchers believe that our sharks' ancient ancestors lived during the late Ordovician period about 450 million years ago, yet trees didn't appear to have popped up until about 100 million years ago. It's thought that the earliest species we could classify as a tree was the Archaeopteris, which is now extinct and grew in forests that are now part of the Sahara Desert. This tree had fern-like leaves and had a global distribution. Sharks also survived many, many major extinction events, including the one that killed off the dinosaurs about 65 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. So they are also older than dinosaurs. There are over 500 shark species alive today, most of which have long, streamlined bodies, enormous tails, and teeth at the front for capturing prey. And yet here we are with some shark species classed as endangered because we keep using their fins for soup. So trees might have been late to the party, but sharks may end up being the first to leave it. Number 7. Snakes Can Burp Fire When you think of fire-breathing animals, you immediately think of dragons. But in the right circumstances, snakes can burp fire. It's incredibly rare and pretty unlikely to happen, but it's actually not impossible. It just needs the right set of circumstances. Basically, the snake would need to eat an animal that subsequently bursts while being digested. When it explodes, it needs to fill the snake's stomach up with hydrogen. The snake can then burp fire if it happens to be near a spark of some sort. It's not known what actually happens if a snake does burp fire, though. Does the snake explode? Does it light on fire? Does it experience severe burns and die? Well, we may never know. But in my opinion, snakes are dangerous enough without having them burping fire everywhere. The mere thought of fire burping snakes may make you wonder the science behind fire-breathing dragons if they were to exist. Fire needs something to ignite a blaze, fuel to help it burn, and oxygen to interact with. When you see fictional dragons with flaming gas, there doesn't seem to be a way for that to happen. If it were gas inside the dragon, the dragon wouldn't have as much control over the fire as it seems to have in most TV shows and movies. But if it were a liquid, the dragon would need to expel it quickly to avoid burning itself. Number 6. Penguins were 6 feet tall 30 million years ago. Among the largest penguins that we have today are emperor penguins. They weigh about 101 pounds or 46 kilograms and stand at about 1.36 meters or 4.46 feet tall. So they're pretty big, but not outrageously big. However, when fossils were unearthed in Antarctica, researchers came to learn that there used to be penguins much, much bigger than the ones we have today. They would have stood at about 2 meters or almost 7 feet tall and tipped the scales at 115 kilograms or 253 pounds. That's one big bird. The penguin fossil was the most complete one they had ever found in the Antarctic, but researchers had previously uncovered thousands of penguin bones. Most of them had been wings and feet, but it wasn't until this nearly complete skeleton was found that they were able to learn more about their sizing. The penguin may have lived about 37 million years ago and was named the Colossus penguin. Its size may have made it more capable of diving deeper into the water and staying in it longer to have more time to hunt for fish. Its larger size clearly didn't help but survive since it's now extinct, though. Number 5. Dogs can learn up to 250 words and gestures. We probably don't give dogs enough credit. We know they're smart when they can fetch a ball, sit on command, and work out those complex dog food puzzles we give them, but their vocabulary can actually be a lot more advanced than we probably think, or at least that's likely true of some breeds. Researchers were curious about just how intelligent dogs could be and decided to study them in great detail. From their intensive research, they learned that dogs could understand up to 250 words and gestures. They can also count to five and perform mathematical calculations. Well, simple ones at least. According to researchers, some dog breeds are as mentally capable as children of about two and a half years of age. They discovered this by adapting tests designed for human children and determined that dogs could recognize words, count, and reason. Dog breeds in the top 20% of dog intelligence could learn up to 250 words, while the average dog could learn about 165 words, signs, and signals. Now, if you're wondering what your own dog is capable of, then see if they are one of the most intelligent breeds. In terms of dog IQ, Border Collies are at the top of the list, with Poodles, German Shepherds, Golden Retrievers, Dobermans, Shetland Sheepdogs, and Labrador Retrievers also appearing close behind. Number 4. Australian Birds Deliberately Spread Wildfires 
Australia has a hell of a time in summer. When they're not battling extreme temperatures, everything is on fire. It's a complete nightmare. Eight out of ten fires are caused by lightning strikes, but what about the remaining two? Well, humans are the cause of many blazes, but so are birds. Indigenous people from the Northern Territory of Australia say that a group of birds called firehawks control fire by carrying burning sticks in their beaks or talons to new locations. They use the fire to help them find food because small animals try to flee the blaze, giving them a chance to identify and capture something to eat. If the prey is trapped in the fire, the birds will simply feast on their barbecued remains. Apparently, the whistling kite, black kite, and the brown falcon are the arsonists in question. In a biography called I, the Aborigine, there are references to someone seeing a hawk picking up a smoldering stick from a fire and dropping it half a mile away on a patch of dry grass. They will then wait until scared and scorched reptiles and rodents run to safety. Once the area was burnt out, they would repeat the practice somewhere else. Number 3. Woodpeckers Eat Brains with a name like woodpecker, you would think this bird lived on a diet of wood, or at least that it spent most of its time pecking wood. But this bird has a deep, dark, disturbing secret. It likes to peck skulls and eat out the brains. Bird brains aren't their first meal choice. They do prefer insects and conifer seeds, but they're also known to take eggs and young birds from nest holes. And while they don't really look like savages, we have video evidence that they can be. Ornithologist Harold Greeney focused his camera on a morning dove nest in 2015 to see what their breeding habits were like in an urban environment. You might think he'd just see baby birds and their parents going about their day, but what he actually captured on camera was genuinely horrifying. While the mother dove is out, likely getting breakfast for her babies, a Gila woodpecker pays a visit, noticeable by its black and white wings and long, sharp beak. And it's not just curious, it's out for blood, and as it turns out, brains. Like a scene from a horror film, the woodpecker proceeds to cock its head back and peck at the skulls of the live baby doves. It moves its beak like a pneumatic hammer until the skulls have been opened up. The woodpecker then uses its terrifyingly long and sticky tongue to extract the brains. Ugh, that's my appetite gone. Number 2. Camels Don't Store Water in Their Humps I don't know if it's just the literature we had access to in our youth or what, but many of us somehow imagine the humps of camels just being filled with water. We know they live in the desert, so they definitely need to have access to water when there's simply none in their environment, but that's not quite how it works. Those humps on their backs are not filled with water. They're filled with fatty tissue that they can access as nourishment when their food supplies are limited. Once they have to rely on those humps for sustenance, they flatten out and then become humps once more once they gain access to food again. The humps also help them regulate their body temperature in a harsh desert environment. So how can they go almost a week without access to water if their humps don't contain any? Well, they have unique oval-shaped blood cells that let camels consume up to 30 gallons of water in one sitting. Their strange shape also helps their blood to flow freely when water is scarce. So basically, their fatty humps and the strange makeup of their blood cells are what help them survive in harsh desert environments, not large bladders of water under their skin. Number 1. The largest singular snowflake was 15 inches. When snow falls, you notice tiny snowflakes that gather on the ground to create thick layers of snow. But while most snowflakes are tiny, some have been absolutely huge. The largest ever witnessed was about 15 inches wide, and it was seen by Army personnel at Fort Keogh on the western side of the then territory of Montana. That was over 100 years ago now, and the largest flakes we generally see are about 3 inches. That's not to say it's impossible to see big ones. According to scientific theories, large snowflakes can form when they have a water base. More than one can stick together to create snowflakes as large as dinner plates. While it's hard to verify something that happened so many years ago, there is a Guinness World Record for this supposed large snowflake. The record states that Matt Coleman, the owner of a ranch, measured a 15-inch wide and 8-inch thick snowflake on January 28, 1887 at Fort Keogh, Montana. He described it in a monthly weather review magazine as being larger than milk pans. Learning random new facts can be a pretty fun way to pass the time, and I bet there were at least a handful of things you didn't know. Which one of these facts surprised you the most? Were there any that you actually already knew? I'll never look at birds or hotel rooms the same, that's for sure. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!